So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. All the best wishes. It began on a cold January day in 2009 with high hopes that change for the better was coming. But after nearly five years in office, some of the more pressing problems in the black community have not improved under Barack Obama. The country's back to pretty much where it was when this president started. Um, white people in this country are doing a bit better. Black folks are doing a full point worse. The current unemployment rate for blacks is slightly higher now than it was in January 2009 when Mr. Obama became president. For blacks with a college degree, their jobless rate has doubled since 2007. Median family income for black Americans has fallen 10% during the Obama years. And more troubling, the net worth of the average African American household is now 22 times less than the average white household. The wealth gap between blacks and whites was 20 times greater when George W. Bush was president. Take off your bedroom slippers. Put on your marching shoes. Shake it off. Stop complaining. Stop grumbling. Stop crying. We are going to press on. We've got work to do. We have got 42% of our black children living in poverty. 22% we talked about before, people living in poverty. They have a right to cry. They have a right to have legitimate grievances. So I, mean, I, I think the president ought to apologize. I think he ought to ask for our forgiveness. In education, the high school graduation rate for black males, a key indicator of future economic success, has risen during the past decade, but most of that happened during the Bush presidency. Under Mr. Obama, the graduation rate of black men has continued to lag far behind that of whites. In many of the nation's major cities, like Detroit, the current black graduation rate is less than 30%. Latinos asking them for something and they got something. Gay and lesbians said don't ask, don't tell, changed it. Jewish brothers and sisters said deal with Israel, deal with it. All of those are specific entities. Why is it when it comes to Negroes? Why is it when it comes to black folk? All of a sudden we are persona non grata. I tell you Mr. Obama to deal with the black agenda is what every president before you had to do. Swear Under President Ronald Reagan, black-owned business income rose nearly 50 percent, and the black middle class expanded by a third. During the Obama presidency, the reverse has happened. Black business income down and the black middle class shrinking. The black incarceration rate is essentially unchanged during the Obama presidency. While George Bush was in office, the imprisonment rate for black men fell nearly 10 percent. Recent surveys indicate race relations have worsened a bit since Obama became president. On issues of race, President Obama has been criticized as being somewhat tepid, not aggressive or proactive enough. Many African Americans would love to see President Obama talk more about their community specifically, talk about their needs specifically, and be engaged in their immediate communities. When he visited Goree Island in Senegal, once a prime port for exporting African slaves to America, Mr. Obama simply called the visit a powerful moment. Uh, you know, to be able to uh, visit this site, uh, I think, gives me even greater motivation in terms of the defense of human rights around the world. Ten years earlier, George Bush went to Gore Island to deliver a speech denouncing slavery in the strongest possible terms. At this place, liberty and life were stolen and sold. One of the largest migrations of history was also one of the greatest crimes of history. A republic founded on equality for all became a prison for millions. Many doubt that Obama would have been able to push through Congress measures like civil rights and voting rights, which President Lyndon Johnson was able to do, or that Mr. Obama would have been as aggressive as LBJ in combating groups like the Ku Klux Klan. So if Klansmen hear my voice today, let it be both an appeal and a warning to get out of the Ku Klux Klan now and return to a decent society 
before it is too late. It's entirely possible that racism may be playing a role in preventing Barack Obama from doing more to address problems which disproportionately impact black Americans. The level of vitriol and disrespect toward President Obama seems unprecedented in the nation's history. He was publicly called a liar by South Carolina Representative Joe Wilson during a joint address to Congress. The reforms I'm proposing would not apply to those who are here illegal. Not true. And since the day he was first inaugurated, white conservatives have made a conscious effort to vitiate, which is to make ineffective the Obama presidency. I know what his politics are. I know what his plans are, as he has stated them. I don't want them to succeed. I hope he fails. And yet, despite the obstructionism and the vitriol, President Obama has an impressive list of accomplishments. From staving off an economic meltdown with an $800 billion stimulus package, to killing Osama bin Laden, to enacting credit card reforms benefiting all American consumers, to helping to rescue the U.S. auto industry. Eight minutes worth of work, and it's a standard.